Today, I am ranking my top 10 favorite Jedi of all time, from the big screen to your phone. Some of these are super iconic and others are, I'll just say, probably a little controversial, and I'll leave it at that. Number 10, Mace Windu. You remember him, right? The guy who got thrown out of window because the boy he told to stay in timeout didn't listen? I'm looking at you, Anakin. But seriously, everyone likes Mace Windu, at least a little bit, because of Samuel L. Jackson, and how he just asked for a purple lightsaber and they just gave it to him. What a legend. But back on topic. He is a great character, he is an absolute beast in lightsaber combat, and he uses a mix of light and dark, using his own form, Vapa. He is such a beast, like in that one scene in Season 7 of The Clone Wars where he says, At this point of The Clone War, I have dismantled and destroyed over 100,000 of you Type 1 battle droids. I am giving you an opportunity to peacefully lay down your weapons. Blast them! Probably one of the sickest lines of all time, and they should have listened to him too, because in the end, they all got destroyed. The main part of Mace that people don't like is him not liking Anakin, but to be honest, he was right, wasn't he? But a lot of people criticize him for being the reason that Anakin turned to the dark side, but in my opinion, Sars would be a lot worse without Darth Vader. Number 9, Cal Kestis. I just love his games, bro. Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor are amazing games, and Cal Kestis is the main focal point of those two games, so he deserves most of the love. But that's pretty much it for him. Yeah, there's at least one book that I know of. There's not that much to go off of. But everyone loves a heartwarming underdog story. And that's what Cal has for us. Being from a shipyard working for the Empire when his friend almost dies and he uses the force to save him. But then is hunted by the Inquisitors. It's a great story. One thing we get about his past that is cool, in my opinion anyway, is that we get to see him as a young Padawan during Order 66 and his master being shot and killed by the clones after an extremely valiant effort. And after that, Cal feels responsible for his death and he wants to destroy the Empire for peace and revenge for his master. He meets a lot of new friends, and they travel picking off the Empire from the shadows, which sounds a lot like the next person on the list. Number 8, Ezra Bridger. If I would have made this a couple months ago, then he wouldn't be this high, or even on the list maybe. But after watching Rebels with no help from the Ahsoka series, I've grown to really like this character. Starting out as a Lothal street rat to a Jedi that saves the galaxy, seems like the Star Wars hero arc. But he meets a lot of people and joined the Ghost Crew and became a fully fledged Jedi Knight even though his Master Kanan never really made it there. But the part of the story I liked most is his pull to the dark side from the end of Season 2 to the middle of Season 3, where Maul is after him and he is trying to kill Kanan and become Ezra's master so he can kill Obi-Wan and finally have revenge. But Ezra doesn't want to be a Sith, but he does want to destroy the Sith and thinks Maul is just a random old hermit that knows a little of the Force but Ezra learns he is evil pretty quickly. His main character development came in the form of him wanting to be with his family again, which begins in the first episode and ends with the last one, where he is tempted by the Emperor to go into this temple that will bring him to his family, when while crying he says, You'll always be a part of me, but I have to let you go. As Ezra crushes the temple with the Force, his mom and dad say, We love you, Ezra, as the temple collapses and Ezra runs out. In Season 4, after the death of his master, he grows up a lot and becomes the hero that he was in the final episode ready to let go of everything and everyone to sacrifice his own life for the fate of the galaxy, which Sabine ruins by letting the Empire find Thrawn, undoing what Ezra's sacrifice was all for, and all of this being in the Ahsoka series. Speaking of Ahsoka, number 7, Ahsoka Tano. I feel like Ahsoka's beginning and Ezra's were very similar, just being an annoying little kid, but over time turns into this wise, very powerful Jedi. If I made this list a couple years ago, she would be higher, but since I have liked other characters more and more, and her less and less. I just haven't liked her as much in live action. But The Clone Wars is such an amazing show and definitely one of the best parts of Star Wars media and she's one of the biggest characters in that show, not just Jedi. Her ability to take on Maul at the end showed how much her power had grown. Also later in her life, specifically in the Star Wars Rebel series, in the span of one day she held her own fighting Darth Maul, Darth Vader, and Emperor Palpatine. A very impressive feat. Number 6, Qui-Gon Jinn. The original master of the Chosen One, the master of the Living Force. This very wise Jedi is just so cool. I love his character, but the reason he isn't higher is because he has so little screen time in shows or movies. Like, isn't it insane that in the total screen time in shows and movies that Qui-Gon has about 50 minutes and Jar Jar Binks has about 80. Yes, you heard that correctly. Jar Jar has 30 more minutes of screen time than Qui-Gon Jinn. Most of it being the Clone Wars, but that is still insane. But I think one of the main reasons I like him so much is because he is so different from the other Jedi, being wiser than many of them, but also willing to use the Force to his advantage. But not for his own personal gain, for the will of the Force. Also, he's just an amazing liar. Like when he lied to Anakin that he was just checking him for infections, 
What a crazy liar. Speaking of crazy, number five, Grand Master Yoda, the Grand Master of the Jedi Order, also known as the wisest, and maybe even the oldest, and probably even the shortest. But really, his duels always look spectacular. Like him versus Dooku, amazing. Him versus Palpatine was also insane. But the best one was definitely Yoda versus R2D2. That was a cinematic masterpiece. Also, he has some of the best quotes in Star Wars history, like, Do or do not. There is no try. And, Look at me. Just me by my size, do you? And in my opinion, his most savage line is when Palpatine was trying to leave, but Yoda gets in front of him and says, If so powerful you are, why leave? His ability to always be one of the funniest characters in anything he is in, while also being the wisest, makes him such a great character. And him being as strong as he is in the Force and Lightsaber skill whenever he is on the screen, it's a joy to watch. Number 4. Kanan Jarrus, also known as Caleb Doom. One of the greatest Jedi ever, but not in the traditional way. He was a friend to Ezra, his apprentice, while also being a father figure. His character is just so well-rounded and becomes so much better in the later seasons of Rebels. When he becomes blind, he becomes similar to Qui-Gon Jinn, where he follows the will of the Force. The main two character development pieces for Kanan is that he thinks he can't teach Ezra. He thinks he'll fall to the dark side. But the other one is that he's scared to die, to give up himself, fearing what would happen to the rest of the Ghost crew. This is what Ezra said about Kanan after he died. I feel lost without my master. He was wise and brave and he cared. He was always there for me when no one else was. There was so much more I needed to learn from him. I think that pretty much sums up his character perfectly. And his death was so sad, but it was also the death that Kanan deserved. Being able to see Hera one last time and sacrificing himself for them. What a perfect ending for this amazing character. As a reminder before we get into the top 3, this is my top 10 favorite Jedi, not the most powerful or the best written, this is my own personal favors. And with that out of the way, number 3, Anakin Skywalker. First things first, I am only counting Anakin, not Darth Vader in this, but I still think Anakin has some of the best writing of any Star Wars character. If you add Vader, he's definitely number 1 in writing, but he just isn't my favorite character. The Chosen One is an amazing character, his ability to fight with a lightsaber and his different look on things and his different style of handling battle was some of the best things about him. Like what he did in Season 7 The Clone Wars, where he went out into the middle of a bridge by himself and told the droids that they surrendered, for the droids to shoot at him and for him to deflect it straight into their tactical droid, making it very easy to defeat them. He also is young and fun, his lines can be hilarious and his skills are insane with a lightsaber. It's always fun to watch him duel someone. Hayden Christensen helps with that. Anakin's ability to think on his feet is always a joy to watch, and can't forget about his piloting skills. That's why they call him Sky Guy, right? I know that's not why they call him that, but it does make sense. Or am I just tweaking? Just like this next person on the list. Number 2, Luke Skywalker. The reason I said that he's tweaking is because this dude really kissed his sister. That's just some crazy shenanigans. But for real, he has, in my opinion, top tier character development. He's one of the main reasons I love the original so much. Him being so cool in the Mandalorian, I just think that makes his character that much better. Him and Vader have some of the best dialogue ever in any movie. Some of it is so heartwarming, some of it being so evil, and some of it very sad. Like Vader's ending scene pretty much always makes me tear up. His duels are also pretty good, filled with great dialogue with Vader. The reason Luke can be this high is because I don't really think that old Luke, like Sequel's Luke, is the same Luke from the original trilogy. Like even Mark Hamill said he didn't feel like Luke Skywalker that he could be Ben Skywalker, but not Luke. Speaking of Ben, and at number one, Obi-Wan Kenobi, or later known as Ben Kenobi. It's the one and only Obi-Wan Kenobi, the master of Riz himself. He is such a perfect character, being in the whole entire saga, the originals and the prequels, being the master for both the Skywalkers, training them into some of the most powerful Jedi ever. His rivalry versus Vader is one of the best rivalries in any franchise, hands down. Even though the Kenobi show wasn't great, the scenes with Obi-Wan and Vader were awesome. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did, and don't forget to leave a comment below with your own Top 10 Jedi ranking. And if you want to see me rank every Star Wars TV show, click this video popping up now. And as always, thanks for watching, and have a great day.